Hello, my name is Klaudiusz Kosowski. I'm an orthopedic surgeon working in Poznań, Poland. I gained most of my orthopedic experience in the United Kingdom, where I trained and worked for nearly 20 years. Today, I would like to share my experience on using synthetic graft for ACL reconstruction. There has been some controversy, but also lack of data on the use of synthetic ACL grafts. I have been using dual ACL synthetic graft for almost 10 years and also conducting several studies of which some results I will present today. Problems with current ACL reconstruction procedures relate to rehabilitation, which takes too long, inadequate strength of the graft, lack of sufficient tissue, especially for multi-ligament injury, and complications associated with graft harvesting, such as permanent deficiencies in muscle strength, anterior knee pain, and sometimes patella fracture. On the other hand, list of advantages of synthetic grafts includes uh, consistent dimension, strength and stiffness, theater time saving, none of the complications associated with graft harvesting, strength of the implant remains high over the initial post-operative period and tissue ingrowth further increases the strength, no need for a brace in the post-operative period, greatly reduced rehabilitation time and return to professional sports as soon as 12 weeks, no risk of disease transmission and is especially useful in multi-ligament injuries and revision scenarios. The synthetic graft I have been using over the years is the Dual ACL from Kairos Limited. Dual ACL characteristics. It is a specialized textile scaffold which is rendered versatile for ACL reconstruction by various structural features. Its continuous tubular form can accommodate a hamstring tendon. The dual ACL can be secured to the bone with currently available fixation devices at both the femoral and tibial sides. The scaffold is treated with a proprietary gas plasma treatment process that increases its surface energy and renders it hydrophilic, which accelerates cell recruitment and adhesion. The open weave section have appropriate spacing to encourage tissue ingrowth and the densely woven section have superior handling uh, properties. Uh, further, uh, dual ACL can be implanted as a total tissue sparing device or with a single hamstring tendon. It's manufactured from polyethylene terephthalate, better known as polyester, which is biocompatible and safe for its application, allows early rehabilitation as is longitudinal polyester fibers provide strength of nearly 2,500 newtons, can be implanted using standard modern ACL guide systems, and its stiffness is matched to that of semitendinosus tendon to permit low transfer and encourage cell growth due to plasma treatment. My experience with synthetic ACL reconstruction spans over 10 years with nearly 1,000 primary reconstructions uh, performed. I also have considerable experience with revision surgery of re-ruptured autografts and synthetic grafts as well. As I have mentioned before, I have been conducting a number of studies concerning use of the synthetic graft, but today I'd like to focus on two of them. And the first one is a study comparing the ACL reconstruction with ST and the button versus ACL reconstruction with dual endobatan, which is a randomized prospective and multi-center study with two-year follow-up. And the most recent study, which is a post-market clinical follow-up study with retrospective data collection with at least five years follow-up and telephone call to collect patients reported outcomes. If we look at the results of IKDC 2000 and LISL uh, scales uh, between uh, dual and uh, ST groups, mm, uh, these are comparable. A technical scale uh, 24 months after surgery is slightly better for the dual ACL group. Laxity assessment was performed using uh, Genrop arthrometer 
which is much better tool than an old um, KT2000. And if you look at the results uh, for both groups, uh, these are comparable. And the latest in the dual ACL uh, studies is a post-market clinical follow-up study, which is retrospective study with at least five years follow-up and a telephone call to collect patients' reported outcomes. If we look at the IKDC 2000 and Lissolm scales, uh, we can see that the results are good. And if we analyze the pre-injury Tegna with the current Tegna levels, um, it indicates that majority of patients uh, have been able to return to the pre-injury level of activities. The main focus in the latest study was to assess the longevity of the dual ACL and with a mean follow-up of eight years after reconstruction, the reconstruction failure, five out of 103 patients, which gives the result of 4.8%, uh, shows a really a low uh, re-rupture rate. If we look at literature and results uh, uh, published by Lucy Salmon, Thomas Sanders, Jeff Leiter, uh, Wright, Rick et al., um, with uh, follow-up between 5 to 10, 14 years, the rate of failure is between 5.3% up to 12%. The main reason for longevity of the dual ACL, although it's a synthetic device, is the tissue ingrowth into and around it. I think this process is best illustrated by a couple of minutes animation, which I would like to show you. This animation illustrates the process of induction and maturation of tissue ingrown on polyester ligament and tendon implants. It is of great importance that the implant has an open structure and is fixed taut in the joint so that it experiences cyclic tensile loading during activities of the recipient. Cyclic tensile loading occurs as the knee is extended, so the ligament stretches and recovers as the knee is bent. The process of tissue ingrowth begins with synoviocytes and bone marrow stem cells swarming the implant. On landing on its surfaces, these cells adhere to the many filaments which form the implant. Let's take a closer look at how the cells interact with the surfaces of the filaments as the implant stretches and recovers during knee movement. The cells become aware of being stretched and relaxed. They perk up and respond to the cyclic tensile loading, which is the mechanical stimulus that causes them to change their phenotype or shape. They change from a round shape to a spindle shape, which is characteristic of ligament cells. Accompanying this change in shape, the cells begin to synthesize extracellular matrix. Gradually, this tissue synthesis expands, filling the space between the cells. This is how cells and tissue appear in real life. The blue shapes are the cell's nuclei. Tissue continues to cover the filaments which make up the implant and finally fills up the square open spaces in the implant structure. This demonstrates the importance of the implant's open weave which provides space for effective tissue to occupy. This process continues until the entire implant is covered with new tissue. As this tissue continues to experience cyclic tensile loading, it remodels and matures into ligament type 1 collagen. This is how the neoligament appears six months after surgery in the canine model. The tissue histology resembles that of the natural ligament. The appearance of the neoligament in the human acquires the fan shape 12 months after surgery. The histology of the neoligament in a human shows a hypercellular structure after 12 months and less so after 18 months. 
my conclusions derive from nearly 10 years observations of the dual ACL and the latest studies, there are still two more studies which are ongoing, but the current results indicate that the ACL reconstruction with the dual ACL offers the following advantages. It allows the surgeon to aim for joint tissue preservation and ligament healing rather than replacement. It provides immediate stability which restores the knee's function and allows aggressive rehabilitation. Avoids complications associated with graft harvesting such as donor side morbidity. Keeps the natural ACL intact and has tissue ingrowth into the dual ACL and avoids the detrimental effects of immobilization. So final conclusion is that in my opinion uh, this technique is a viable alternative to current ACL reconstruction techniques and offers many convincing advantages. And finally a couple of uh, intraoperative uh, photographs taken as a part of second look following a meniscal injury and probing uh, the stability of the ligament which clearly is overgrown with tissue and on the second photograph uh, you can see that I made a little window uh, to expose and see the underlying uh, dual ACL graft. Thank you very much for your attention.